good morning good day i'm going to share with you today on obeying the voice of god requires us to trust in the lord that's the thesis many people think that obeying the voice of the lord is something you have to push for something inorganic something uh with manpower and will and discipline it's kind of a you something that you don't like and uh, you try to fight it you know that you should do just like paul said right the things that i should do i don't do the thing i should not be doing i keep on doing so there is a great aspect of the word trust in god our failure to obey the voice of the lord comes primarily because we fail to trust in the lord we fail to trust in the goodness of the lord we question it whether it is actually the best thing for our lives you know we we kind of know in our head but our heart fights it because we are fallen flesh that's why the transformation has to happen within us before we can transform the culture and both of them happen should be simultaneously culturally and personally um so let me read to you proverbs chapter 3 my son do not forget my teachings but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace that will add to you god promised to give us long life by us keeping the promise by his word by his commandments you know by keeping god's commandments we have long life but and not only they have peace i'm not saying that categorically that's going to happen but there's a lot of fact of the general promise of god stands i know that most people don't like to touch on it because you can't prove it but generally that's a case but more importantly the point is do not forget god's teaching how can you keep god's commandments if you forget god's teaching right how can you even keep god's commandments if you don't even know what that these commandments are that's why you need to know the teaching of the word of god that's why you need to go to an orthodox church that's why you need to go to a environment where the teaching of the word of god is orthodox you can't go to a, to a culturally driven teaching church accommodating the culture culture dictates what you learn a lot of churches compromise to accommodate to accept them because culture is almost akin to the word the world jesus said the world hates you because it's hated me jesus also said whoever loves the world is the enemy of god that world there is of the flesh of the last of the world basically but culture covers that primarily plus the common grace which is a good thing however it says it says here that length and days of years shall be peace and peace shall be added unto you okay so but how how do we obey how do i you know how do we not forget the teach first of all you need to be taught the word of god that's a point if you are not taught sufficiently the word of god it's really hard you can go superficial if you want to go in depth the word of god that you know if you go superficial then you'll miss the whole load of great teachings of the word of god however the danger is you know a lot of teachers but has not transformed so i want to deal with the heart transformation part of it here uh that happens in verse 5 hello hallelujah verse 5 says trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding that's a key to uh obeying god's voice because this verse 5 you know verse 1 said do not forget my teachings and what else and uh let your hearts keep my commandments this verse 1 and verse 5 gives you the key to that trust in the lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding sometimes you may not understand it but that's fine trust in the lord 
Once you trust in the Lord with all your heart, then it will be easy to obey. Obedience is just a matter of manifestation of your heart condition. You struggle to sin and not sin. <laughs> it's a personal choice, right? That choice, if it is guided and guarded by um, trust in the Lord, it will be so easy because you trust Him. Let me just explain the word trust in the Lord a little bit. Yeah, this is ESV Study Bible. Trust in the Lord is necessary for fulfilling any of the wise ways of life taught in Proverbs. Trust in the Lord is closely connected to fearing Him. Trust in the Lord is connected with fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you see that? And trust in the Lord has to do with fear of the Lord. And to get the uh, obeying the voice of God, it has to do with the trust in the Lord. And therefore, trust in the Lord is a fear of the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you can't obey the voice of God. Do you got that? I think that is the most paramount importance to really know who He is. How do we do that? Okay. Let me read you Proverbs 19, 23. Okay. The fear of the Lord leads to life. And whoever has it rests satisfied. He will not be visited by harm. <laughs> if you fear the Lord, you will rest satisfied. Once you rest satisfied, you, you, you will not make silly choices. You, you disobey, just disobey, disobey the voice of the Lord. The voice of God. Like Adam and Eve, if they had the fear of the Lord, Right there, they would have been able to rest satisfied in the Lord. Instead of taking the forbidden fruit, being tempted by, by the serpent. You know? That, that's, that's, that's so important. Okay? It said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Study Bible said, with all your heart indicates trust goes beyond intellectual assent to a deep reliance on the Lord. A settled confidence in his care and his faithfulness to his word. Okay. Goes beyond. A sense intellectually, you know, agree. There's a deep reliance on the Lord. Reliance on the Lord. You know, to obey the voice of the Lord requires you to rely. Uh, re requires a deep reliance on the Lord. Wow. What a great revelation that is. If you don't rely on the Lord, you can't obey the voice of the Lord. If you can't obey the voice of the Lord, you'd miss out all the long life and the peace, blessing the world. And not only that, eternal life. Not only that, human flourishing, culture, humanity, and everything that is in the world that's waiting for the cultural, cultural flourishing. Okay, trust in God. You know, if we don't deeply rely on God, it will be a, it'll be a fruitless endeavor to try to obey the voice of God. If we don't learn to deeply rely on the Lord, we will have difficulty to try to obey the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. The voice of God is far beyond us. I just love ESV said, God told Israel, Israel to obey the voice of the Lord and His covenant. First of all, His personal voice brings a very personal connection to it. And I just love that. You know, Christianity is worshiping a lively person who, who has emotion, who is kind, who is compassionate, who is uh, merciful, who loves and forgives. And He's also holy and righteous. And He's also vengeance and God of fire, of jealousy. It's very much like a full-blown human being. Guess where we got all this from? We got all this from our Creator because we were created in His image, but we distorted it. All the aspects of God is divine, pure, righteous, holy, beautiful, satisfying, everything. That's what the 
That's what we are going back to the original redemption. God is bringing us back to that redemption status. That is just so beautiful. So folks, obedience of the voice of God requires to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Do not lean on our understanding. I love Augustine who said this, I believe, therefore I understand. <laughs> you never go, I understand, therefore I believe. You won't get that. With God, it's faith. Faith requires no understanding. Faith requires your belief and your belief and belief and not using uh, human intellectual, you know, trying to push your ways through. That is a downfall of so many churches today because they, they jettison the supernatural and they give everything to try to intellectual understanding the culture, everything. May God bless you.